What's good, Deluxe family? Welcome back to the channel, man. In this video right here, we have the Bible predicted everything we see happening today. I came across this video. I found it very, very interesting. Even if you read the Bible, even if you don't. This should be a very interesting uh, video because the Bible is the first book ever created. And if it's predicting things that are happening today, that should show the power within the Bible. I read the Bible. Uh, I recently started probably like a, like a couple months ago. I started reading it consistently, and there's a lot of truth in it when it just comes to like human, like human, humankind, and uh, um, just the way we operate. You feel what I'm saying, man? So without further ado, let's get straight into this. We don't have to look at it at any religious standpoint. You feel what I'm saying? Let's just look at it for what it is. Let's get straight into this. What would you say if I told you that everything happening in the world today was predicted in a book that was written over 2,000 years ago? Would you believe me? What if I showed you irrefutable evidence that not only proves the accuracy of these prophecies, but also lays out a roadmap for future events that will change the world as we know it? Let's then, do it. would you believe me? Yeah. The information I'm about to lay out for you has been discussed for thousands of years, however, our generation is the only generation in the history of the world who is lucky enough to see these things come to pass. I forgot to make mention, if you guys do want to enter the giveaway, make sure you just subscribe to this channel, turn on post notifications, um, follow me on the gram, spam me if you want, and just DM me when you're done, okay? Alright. It's happening right before our very eyes. End Times Productions, okay. Hope y'all tuned in. Hope y'all got your little snacky snack in your bed because we about to watch this theatrical now, film. at this point, some of you may be saying to yourselves, but the Bible was written by men and Jesus Christ is just a myth. So why should we believe in some fairy tale from a time long ago? Fairy tale? Myth? Actually, this couldn't be further from the truth. The truth of the matter is that Jesus Christ was an actual historical figure whose life was well documented in non-biblical historical records. He was even documented performing miracles. Um, like, you know, like Christians, they worship uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and their King and stuff like that. So before I was able to put my faith into him, I, was, I had to actually do my research. Cause I'm like, yo, how am I going to put my faith into something I don't know? But Jesus was really a living man. Like a living man, he was here on earth. Like it's not a myth. Like he really was here for hours talking about this. But I'll just leave you with this clip from Lee Strobel's "The Case for Christ." I remember going alone in my room, and I took a yellow legal pad and put a line down the middle. And on one side, I started to list all the evidence I had encountered for Jesus Christ being the Son of God. And on the other side, all the negative evidence against that. And I, I wrote and I wrote page after page. And finally, I put my pen down. And I said, "Wait a minute." In light of this avalanche of evidence pointing toward the truth of Christianity, it would require more faith for me to maintain my atheism than to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Watch closely as Paris demonstrates the keys to etiquette. So now that we've established that Jesus Christ is a real person, let's take a look at some of his words and the prophecies he made and see if they hold up in modern times. So one day, some of Jesus' followers came to him and asked, What shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus gave them a list of things to look out for. And then in Matthew 24, 7, he says this, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows, meaning when you see these things take place, there is no turning back. These events are going to set off a chain reaction resulting in the end of the world as we know it, wow. or as it's called biblically, the day of the Lord. All wow. the things he said are coming to pass right before our very eyes. Let's break it down. Nation against nation. The word used in the original manuscripts for nation is ethnos, meaning a race, that is, a tribe. So ethnos versus ethnos, or race versus race. Sound familiar? What about kingdom versus kingdom? Well, we see this playing out live on TV mm. every single day, and it has been for well over 100 years. The first time China has expelled and actively denounced the U.S., for what it calls the illegal trespass of a warship off the Shisha Islands. India and China will be holding their seventh military level talks on Monday. The meet is expected to not only take stock of the situation on ground, but also the measures on de-escalation by the Chinese side. 
heavy fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan has continued for another day. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The kingdom of the West versus the kingdom of the East. And it's not just about war, it's about ideologies, domination, and control. Yeah. Kingdom versus kingdom. There shall be famines. According to the United Nations, the world is on the brink of a biblical famine caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. 135 million people in 55 countries experienced acute food insecurity in 2019. 135 million people. And that was last year. Before yeah, and, and the, um, if you guys were watching any of my other videos, well, I could just mention right now, yo, like crime rates have really been rising because people need to eat. <laughs> like people who once had jobs, they're now starving because you have inflation going up, but the pay staying the same. They're not able to pay bills, money. That's that's a fact. For COVID-19, let's put that into perspective. 135 million people. That's almost half of the entire population of the world when Jesus was alive. There will be famines. Pestilence. The word pestilence means a plague. Literally, the disease. Wow. Can you think of anything that matches the description of the disease? Yes, sir. Not only that, but people are the sickest they've ever been, historically speaking. We have modern medicine and yep. drugs that don't... I need a... YouTube is funny when it comes to medical things and stuff, so we, need, we can't really watch that. World Health Organization. 29 million people die each year. Pestilence. Earthquakes. All I, all I gotta say about the medical things, because YouTube... I've gotten a strike before because... We're talking about medicine, but nature heals all. Nature, nature heals all. Like that's all you need. Everything can come from nature. If it's not natural, you don't need it. I'm being very honest with you guys. First places. Despite what you may have heard in the past, this is the compiled data from the USGS from over the last 100 years. Keep in mind that we're not talking about the millions of micro tremors that can now be detected from the distribution of more numerous and sensitive sensors, but strictly data from the larger earthquakes that can be felt by people beginning at 6.3 and up on the Richter scale that could be easily detected by early 19th century sensors from virtually anywhere in the world. This data shows what the USGS and other organizations do not want you to see. It shows that the earthquakes are increasing mm. in intensity and they are increasing in frequency. Oh, wow. This is exactly the description that was prophesied. Wow. Now, these aren't the only things that Jesus told us would wow. happen before the day of the Lord occurs. He also said, Matthew 24, 9, Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We see this exact scenario playing out right now all over the world. Places like China and North Korea have underground churches where their members risk death if caught. We see groups like ISIS lining Christians up and decapitating them on camera and then uploading the footage online for the whole world to see. Yeah, we, we got we could skip past this part also, but I'm telling you, YouTube is getting so strict and I know exactly why, but, um, but to speak more on that though, it's very, very true. Like, Christians are persecuted, like, they are. This is the fact. Like even like, for speaking the word, Christians are persecuted. Let's get on to the next one. Though. Let's see what's going on. Then many shall be offended, and many shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Wow. Many shall be offended. Hmm. Karen's. Karen's. It's no secret that society has become ultra sensitive, and now people get offended by every little by thing. everything, you can't speak yo. Ideas anymore without someone taking it the wrong way and wow. hating it for People call it political correctness or cancel culture, and the wow. Bible told us this would happen. Many shall be offended. Check. Wow. And then Jesus said in Matthew twenty four eleven, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. False prophets deceiving many. Again, this should sound very familiar to wow. a lot of you. We have people like Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, and basically the entire NAR movement who are leading people in the wrong direction by preaching a false gospel to their millions of followers. Yeah. There are hundreds of examples of this. The false gospel is being preached, and concepts like repentance and hell are being excluded from the Bible because people are too scared to talk about them. False prophets. Check. Wow. 
Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity, otherwise known as wickedness or sinfulness. It's running rampant in our world. Just turn on the TV and wait five seconds. You'll see. Yeah. Scoby for prep. A once daily prescription medicine that helps lower the chances of getting H after sex. Move! The subject's closed. Yeah! Uh, it's a robot that is designed to... No. Gotta mute that one out. Another thing Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. This is a curious one. The gospel... It says... It says... And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. Jesus Christ shall be preached to the whole world, and then the end will come. That makes sense, because I, I did hear, like, um, like God presents himself to everyone. Like God gives everyone a chance. There's always a point of a person's life where, you know, like, they're introduced to Jesus and God. Um, so I guess he's waiting for everyone to get that chance to come. And then once everyone has that chance and they made their decision, then that's when he's going to come, which makes which makes hella sense. This news story from late 2018 really hits the nail on the head for this one. This missionary was killed by an uncontacted tribe on a remote island off the coast of India oh, in late 2018. And this island is thought to be the last place on earth, literally, where Christian missionaries have never been. He was killed preaching the gospel to literally the last place on earth where the gospel had never been preached. And think about this. What happened since then? Basically everything. Since that time, late 2018, the world has gotten exponentially worse. And it's actually quite astonishing how fast things have declined since that time. The wow. gospel shall be preached to the entire world. Check. All these things Jesus warned about have come to pass, or are coming to pass right now. But what about the rest of the Bible? What other prophecies have been fulfilled regarding end times events? Well, the list can go on for miles, so we're just going to cover a few of them here. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro. According I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. My knowledge has been increasing. You feel what I'm saying? Over one million people fly every single day. On top of that, there's an estimated 1.4 billion cars on the road globally, Jeez. with more being added every single day. There can wow. be no mistaking it. Our generation has more people going to and fro than any other point in history. Many shall run to and fro. Check. And knowledge shall be increased. This one is no mystery. With the advent of internet, smartphones, and technology, yeah. more people have access to the collective knowledge of all of humanity combined than ever before. Wow. Approximately 4.57 billion people in the world have access to the internet. Compare that with the 300 million that were alive during Jesus' time. And there could be no mistaking it. Knowledge has increased to levels that would be considered impossible by the people living in biblical times. Knowledge shall be increased. Check. That's a check First right Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils mm. So this prophecy has two parts In the latter times people will One, depart from the faith And two, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils mm. Now, it's no secret that large numbers of people are abandoning Christian beliefs and exchanging them for New Age ideas like reincarnation, karma, and the law of attraction. Here are a few charts from the Pew Research Center that illustrates the decline of Christianity in America. So this is between 2018 and 2019. And as you can see here, it breaks it down into the four generations and how many are Christian. The silent generation, born 1928 through 1945, 84% are Christian. Baby boomers, 1946 through 1964, 76% are Christian. Generation X, 1965 through 1980, 67%. And then now we get to millennials, 1981 and 1996, 49%. That's 35% decline. Only 49% identify with Christian beliefs. Now, if you look at the other side of the chart, 40% of millennials are unaffiliated, meaning they're atheist or agnostic or something like that. However, we know that these wow. numbers are probably not too accurate. And 
understand people who identify with being Christian doesn't mean they're Christian. There's a large difference between somebody who maybe was born in a Christian household and identifies culturally as a Christian and somebody who was a born again Christian. There's a huge difference there. So this chart doesn't tell us who's a born again Christian and who's not because we all need to become born again Christians. Nobody's born a Christian. It's a decision you have to make for yourself. Now that we've established- If y'all don't know what a born again Christian is, a born again Christian is basically like, it's basically like, it's going to sound crazy to you guys, but when you give your life to God, and it sounds crazy, but it's kind of like you can't, you die to your flesh. Like you die to all the desires of the flesh, basically like lust, greed, um, like instant gratification. Those are all things that we, we desire instantly. But like once you're born again, you, your flesh is, your flesh is basically gone and then you start feeding your spirit. So that's kind of like the born again Christian is what he's talking about to give you a better insight on that the fact that people have departed from the faith in large numbers. Let's take a look at the second part of this prophecy. People will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what exactly are seducing only spirits fans, and only doctrines fans. of devils? Well, <laughs> spiritualism, new only age fans, beliefs, no cap witchcraft, up. and shamanism all fall into these categories, but that's not all. Think we about can take that. A look at Yo, 2020, I'm talking about... I'm talking about girls, like regular girls down the block were posting their thing thing. I'm like, man. It came to the point, like... Bro, like, I was following, like, say I was following, like, a hundred girls. It came to the point, like, we're, like, <laughs> or, like, in my high school, whatever it is. It came to the point, like, yo, like, a quarter of the girls that you would have never thought was do that stuff started doing it through the influence of the internet, selling their body. Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 10, and get a little bit more detail on this subject. Quote, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these things are an abomination unto the Lord. It's as clear as day. New Age beliefs are an abomination to the Lord. You see, all these spiritual ideas do not come from God. They come directly from Lucifer himself. Remember what he told Eve in the Garden of Eden? Ye shall be as gods. Sound familiar? Because that's exactly the same philosophy that New Age teaches. New Age beliefs yeah. say that we are all God, the universe is alive, and we are part of it. We create our own destiny, we are masters of our own universe. And if we want something bad enough, just will it into existence, because you are God. Now, we know that's false, and we know there is only one God. And that's yeah. exactly why it's an abomination unto the Lord to practice these things, because we're trying to put control into our own hands. When and like, the thing that like really like, shows you like you're not god is the fact that like you don't make the sun rise in the morning you feel what i'm saying like for anyone that has that belief now don't get me wrong you are i'm the son of god you feel what i'm saying and, and the son is taught by the father so i'm not gonna be too far from him you know what i'm saying like you know like just think about in the regular physical realm when a, a father has a son the son grows up to be like the father, you know what I'm saying? So we have to recognize the fact that yo, you're the son of God, and that you're the son of God. Like you, but knowing that there's someone above you that's here to teach you how to be more like Him is where there's a lot of progress made. You know what I'm saying? A lot of progress made when it comes to love, trust, um, and just life overall. You feel what I'm saying? But now you saying that you're God, you believe everything you believe is right when it doesn't you could you could believe killing is right you feel what i'm saying when that's not right but you're going to convince yourself it's right because you believe you're god so it's like yeah, I know what I'm saying is true. Stop playing, man. There's only one in control, and that's the Lord. The bottom line is that New Ageism comes directly from Lucifer. Ye shall be as gods. It's the oldest lie in the book. Now, let's take a look at another chart from the Pew Research Center and see what it says about how many people believe in New Age beliefs. Now, take a look at this chart, and you're going to see something shocking. It says right here, 37% of Christians believe that spiritual energy can be located in physical things. Also, 40% of Christians believe yeah. in psychics. What does that tell you? It tells you that people don't Whoa. read their Bibles because we know that it is an abomination psychics. unto the Lord to believe and practice such things. 29% of Christians believe in reincarnation, and 26% of Christians believe in astrology. These are all doctrines of demons, and they are giving heed to seducing spirits. <laughs> And, and it's I, not just Christians that believe in these things. And I know the astrology one is going to hit a lot of y'all girls watching this video. Oh my gosh, but the way the stars are aligned, you should be mad right now. Oh my god. 
I don't get along with Libras, but you, I'm surprised we're getting along right now. You, you don't, you're not like the other ones. You feel what I'm saying? Or how about, or how about this one? You're a Gemini? No, we can't talk. <laughs> what? That determines who I am now? I, that's crazy, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Just think about it, if it makes sense or not. If you look at this chart, it says right here, 78% of people believe in at least one new age belief. 78%. There can be no question about it. People have departed from the faith and have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, making this prophecy fulfilled. Yeah. Now let's take a look at Romans chapter 1, verse 22 through 32. And see if this rings any bells for you. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who was blessed oh, I just, forever. I just Amen. read this For this day. cause, God God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women changed their natural... Oh, wait, is this Romans, he said? Yeah, this is Romans. I just read this the other day. That's facts. He was basically just explaining how people... People worship the created things rather than the creator. You get what I'm saying? That, yeah, that makes mad sense. There's a lot of people, like, worshiping crystals... But you forgot who created it. There's a lot of people worshiping other people. But why wouldn't you worship the creator? You know what I'm saying? That makes mad sense. Uh, yeah, it's dope. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more, more than, than the, the creator, creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women changed their natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust toward one another men wow. with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat and even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, mm. disobedient to parents, mm. without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they would commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, there is only one generation wow. in the entire history of the world that matches this description. There can be no mistaking it. Just look back through history and try and find one generation that fits the bill. You won't be able to. The truth of the matter is that our generation is the only one in history to fulfill all of these things. There is no yeah. question about that. We could go on all day. As yeah, at this point in time, our generation, that like we find like so much pleasure and happiness in doing like, like wicked things. You know what I mean? Our lustful things. Or, um, or like even some people when it comes to their pride like why are you gonna have why are you gonna know that you have more than someone else and flex on them that's like that's like kicking someone when they're down instead of like you know giving a, them a little something you rather be like yeah I got this and you don't while they're poor which is mad weird hey it is what it is though there are many more Bible prophecies that describes the times we are living in, but I think you get the idea. The Bible is 100% clear on this matter. The time is running short. Our King, Jesus Christ, is coming back. No man knows the day, no man knows the hour, but we do know the season. And at this point, there can be little doubt as to what season we are in. So if you haven't done so already, give your life over to Jesus Christ, repent for your sins, and become born again with the Holy Spirit. It's simple. I want to thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, God bless you all. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to comment down below how y'all feel about this. Um, Like I said, this is not even about religion. You could be... What are the other religions? Like Muslim or... Um, 
or like even atheist or or Islam or even Jewish. Those are the only ones I know about. Those are the only ones I can remember right now. But um, but yeah, it doesn't even matter. Honestly speaking, just comment down below what you guys feel about this and. You know, just look at it open-minded for what it is. I want to hear what you got, what your thoughts on this are. You feel what I'm saying, man? If you did watch this point of video, make sure you do like and subscribe. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. This is when you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace.